I think that's everything that you need to know when taking care of a corgi. Literally everything. We covered it all. Now I... <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is Willow and I am Devin. My life revolves around her. Today we are going to be talking about how to take care of a corgi. Now, disclaimer, I am not a professional trainer or anything like that. I have just had Willow for about three years now and I've done the regular amount of research. I've learned a lot of things. And so this channel is just sharing those things and those experiences with you guys. So hopefully this video helps you whether you already own a corgi or if you're thinking about getting a corgi or if you just like to watch cute corgis on the internet, you've come to the right place. So let's get right into it. So first, I just want to do a brief intro about corgis. Willow is a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. There are two different breeds of corgis. One is a Pembroke Corgi, which is Willow. The other type of corgi is a Cardigan Corgi. There are actually two completely different breeds. The Cardigan Corgis have different coloring and they have tails as well. So they still have the short legs and the long bodies, but they have the long tails too. So the first thing that you need to know about corgis is they are actually bred to be working dogs. They were bred to herd animals. So they are a herding dog. They like to chase things and tell people and animals where to go. So this means that corgis have a lot of energy. They are very high energy dogs. They are very smart and they like to have a job. So you have to make sure that when you get a corgi, you are aware that they are going to have a lot of energy. They're going to need a lot of exercise, mental stimulation, and a lot of good training. So we're gonna be talking about those things in this video. The first thing we are going to talk about when it comes to taking care of a corgi is their diet. So this information about Willow's diet and the type of food that you should be feeding your dog is totally up to you and it could probably apply to all dog breeds. But the reason that you need to be so careful about a corgi's diet and basically just not overfeeding them is because corgis get overweight super, super easily. And I'm sure you've seen a ton of videos of cute, cute corgis rolling around being couch potatoes and being chunky. I mean, that's like the stereotype for a corgi is that they're chunky, little fluffy, fat dogs. But the thing is, that is really, really bad for them because their body structure. They have a super long back and really short legs. And so when they get overweight and they're not physically in good shape and muscular and strong, they actually start to have a lot of medical issues like arthritis, joint and muscular issues, and back and hip issues, which is part of the course with the breed, especially if you're not keeping up with their diet and keeping them thin. I get asked all the time by people who are getting new puppies what I fed Willow when she was a puppy, so let's just start there. When I picked Willow up from the breeder, the breeder told me what food she was already feeding Willow. That happened to be Purina Puppy Chow, um, it was the chicken formula, and that is what I kept Willow on. You need to be sure that if you ever transition your dog from one food to another, it's gotta be kind of a slow transition where you start with like a fourth of the new kibble with three fourths of the old, slowly add more of the new kibble or food and less of the old so that they don't get a stomach ache. So anyways, I kept Willow on Purina Puppy Chow. If the breeder was giving it to her, it's healthy and a good option for her and I didn't want to upset her stomach or throw off her diet or anything like that. So Purina Puppy Chow is what I fed Willow until she was about five months old. What you want to do when you have a new puppy is put water in their food and let it soak for about 20 minutes before feeding them and that just makes it softer for them to be able to chew on with their little puppy teeth and it also helps so that the food is already expanded because if you put kibble in water and you wait, you're going to notice that the kibble is going to get bigger absorbing the water. So that happens inside of their stomach if they are not already, if it's not already absorbed. Purina puppy chow is actually what Willow was eating when she started howling. And so then after she started howling and her account started growing, I got really excited about all these food partnership people that were reaching out to me because they were like, oh, we wanna see if she howls on their food. And so actually I got reached out to buy Pet Plate. They make human grade dog food. So literally they put everything that your dog Hello. needs in their diet and like grounds it up. But the funny thing is when I started feeding that to Willow, she stopped howling, which was really sad. So 
Um, I don't know why that happened, but she wasn't on that food for very long. I did notice that it seemed to be really good for her and um, I'm not saying that it's a bad option. It's a really great option for you if it's something that you can afford. It's better than kibble. I would say I, wouldn't, I don't feed willow kibble anymore. After they get to about six months old, I would start then reconsidering what kind of diet you want your dog to be on for the rest of their lives. So at that point, I started thinking about raw diets and looking into raw food diets. Now, I am not an expert on raw food diets, but I do feed Willow Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried raw patties, and these patties make it super easy for Willow to get a raw diet and make sure that she is getting all of the things that she needs in her diet, so I'm not making the food myself and I'm not skimping on anything that she actually needs in her diet. I can tell you that I have heard a lot of amazing stories about how raw food and raw feeding has affected dogs as they get older and prevented th them from having issues like cancer and arthritis and just help dogs live longer, healthier lives. I hired a trainer and she has raised German Shepherds for as long, her whole adult life and she has had them on raw diets and she says that they live well beyond their expected life expectancies. And so that is one of the reasons why I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna try a raw diet and we're gonna see how it goes. Another reason why I love the raw diet is because, this is gross, if you don't like to talk about poop, then skip this, but um, when you put your dog on a raw diet, their poop is much smaller than it was on any other diet. And so that makes people who are experts in the industry believe that their body is absorbing much more of the nutrients and stuff in that food and so that their poops are much smaller. When Willow was a puppy, she had so many pooping issues. Like she had a really sensitive stomach and this is true for a lot of corgis, a lot of puppies. They all are getting used to the world and living and they have upset stomachs a lot. And I took Willow to the vet a lot for upset stomach issues. But when I switched her to raw diet, I noticed her stomach get so much better. And so that is one of the reasons why I have kept Willow on a raw diet. I also have friends with corgis who have really bad allergy issues and um, you know hot spots and like horrible wounds and stuff just growing on their body from allergies and switching their dog to a raw diet has completely cleared up those issues. So just a few reasons why I love raw diets. It's not for every dog, a lot of vets don't recommend it, but that's just my experience with it. I also tend to feed Willow under the recommended amount of food and then I will put in vegetables with her food just to make sure she doesn't get overweight. Like if we're, if I were to put three-fourths of the recommended food and then substitute the other fourth with green beans or celery or carrots, even apples, things like that, that helps keep your dog from becoming overweight. Don't overfeed them, don't give them too many treats. You can use vegetables a lot as treats. You can use their food a lot as treats because that keeps them from consuming too many calories and getting overweight, basically. All right, now that I've rambled on about food and your dog's diet, let's move on to the next thing, which also goes along with keeping them a healthy weight. Corgis need a lot of exercise. Now this exercise varies from corgi because some corgis are way more high energy and some corgis are a little bit more low energy. As you can see, I got really lucky. Somehow Willow is pretty low energy. So um, we don't have to do too much exercise, but the thing is exercise is really great for keeping them in shape. There are a lot of great ways to keep your dog in shape, give them plenty of exercise, and keep them stimulated mentally. Structured walks like making sure they're healing, staying next to you, or even walks where they're able to sniff things and enjoy the environment, those are all really mentally stimulating for them while also being a great exercise for them. Some dogs don't really enjoy walks though, so what me and Willow will do is we'll go to the park and play fetch and I'll throw the ball as far as I can, and that is a really great way to give her exercise. Some ways that I stimulate her mentally are with treat puzzles which I have talked a lot about in a couple of videos. I will link below some of the treat puzzles that I use and the video talking about the treat puzzles that I use. Um, these require them to use their nose and their brain to sniff out and figure out how to open the puzzles and then get the treats, which is ultimately what they want to do is eat. So really great ways to stimulate them mentally and keep them from doing things like destroying your house, tearing up your couch, 
or eating your baseboards like Willow did to mine. Because these dogs are so active and high energy and like to have a job, if they do not have a job, they usually will find one. Another really fun thing about corgis that a lot of people probably don't know is that they are really athletic dogs and they really enjoy sports. So if you have the time, I would totally get your corgi involved in some sports. Just make sure that you're giving them the mental and physical exercise that corgis need in order to be healthy and well behaved. The third thing that you are going to need to pull out from your toolbox in order to take care of a corgi is that corgis require a lot of training and structure in their lives. And now this may vary depending on corgi, so just be aware of that when you are getting a corgi, they need all the training that you can get, usually. It actually is helping them to live a lot more stress-free because they know what to expect they have that structure and they're not having to worry about like taking care of controlling the house they need to know that you are the alpha and that they don't have to be in charge all the time they can take a break they can calm down and they know that you are going to make sure that they are happy and healthy having things set in place where your dog can't walk through a doorway before you is a great way to show them that you're the alpha having them walk next to you on a leash don't let them pull you down the street on a leash making sure they are really good at recall so if you call them and they're off without a leash they come right to you that is super super important doing things like making them wait before they eat dinner making them watch you before they're allowed to take a treat or eat dinner those type of structural things that you put into their life totally reduce their stress and just make them a much more well-rounded behaved corgi. And also being that corgis are, are so smart, they love learning fun new tricks. Things like I taught Willow recently to hold something in her mouth, which was really awesome for photos, but you know, learning rollover and up and wave and fun things like that these are fun bonding opportunities for you to have with your dog and it's a really great mental exercise for them they like learning they like being rewarded for doing the right thing so corgis love to learn tricks and to train and training is going to be a huge part of your corgi's life and your life corgis are also very stubborn and being that they're a very very smart breed they like to test you so they will test the waters as much as they can and see what they can get away with so don't let them get away with it they are really funny full of personality but they're also very stubborn so just be aware of that and make sure you keep them in line and good luck <laughs> oh hey now let's move on to how to groom your corgi Okay, so grooming a corgi is not that difficult, but yes, they shed. Corgis actually have a double coat. So this means that they shed more than the average dog. German Shepherds have a double coat, Australian Shepherds, Huskies. Those are the dog breeds that have a double coat. And if that says anything about shedding, you should definitely know that corgis are going to shed and leave plenty of corgi glitter on your floor and your furniture. A little bit of information about corgis coats. They come in a couple of different colors and varieties. Pembroke Welsh Corgis come in four different colors. So you have red, which is what Willow is, and that's this color, red, and white. Then you have a tri-color corgi, and that's going to be their head is red looking like Willow, but this back part of their body is black. Then you have a fully black corgi, well not fully black, but in all the places where Willow is red, the corgi is going to be black and then there are sable corgis which is like a mixture of both their fur is a little bit more of a brown than a red and that's on the top of their head and their back as well and you may have noticed if you've seen videos of willow as a puppy or other corgis as puppies their coat changes drastically in color from when they were a puppy to when they are a grown adult corgi willow was really brown she didn't have any red in her really and that slowly changes over time and then you wake up and you have a fully red corgi like willow so you don't want to fully bathe your corgi or dog for that matter more than one time a month because it starts to dry out their skin underneath this coat and they just really don't need it every once in a while you may notice that you know if their paws and their underbelly gets dirty that you want to wash that area and just clean it that up but they don't need a full bath more than once a month willow probably gets a full bath 
every two to three months. She is pretty clean and we don't do a lot of outside dirty activities. I wash Willow with a de-shedder shampoo, which just really helps loosen up all of the hair that's about to fall out anyways. And then you'll notice once you're done bathing your corgi, they're going to shed a lot more in that one instance. So blow drying them after is a really good way to shake all that hair off and then just brush them a lot. The best way to manage the shedding is to brush them once a week at least, because that's just gonna help you get all those loose hairs out and keep them from falling out all over your floor, although they're still gonna fall out a little all over your floor, but that's the best management system that I have heard. <laughs> and then having a Roomba vacuum is really nice. I have a cordless um, hand, like a cordless vacuum that I can whip out at any moment, and I probably vacuum every other day, at least in the spots where I notice there's a lot of hair accumulating. With Willow, I also use conditioner, which just makes her super soft. And then also on the white parts of her body, I use a purple shampoo. I have a grooming video, which I can link below. But the purple shampoo just makes the whites really bright. Corgis should never, ever, ever be shaved unless it's for a medical reason, because they have a double coat. Shaving the coat can really damage the hair and it may not ever grow back the same. So no matter how hot it is, please, please, please never shave your corgi. They do need trim in some areas or, I mean, it depends on the person, but I like to have Willow's little peach bum trimmed every once in a while, like maybe once or twice a year. And then it's also helpful to trim their paw pads because the hair grows really long and then they are unable to get the traction with their paw pads when the hair is in the way, obviously. And then their bellies, <laughs> and it starts to like grow really long. Well, can you roll over? Like right here and stuff. I'm sorry. This area can be trimmed a little bit. Let's get a little. So this area can be trimmed. This area tends to get long. Their little feetsy pads need to be trimmed. I have a little shaver thing that I just shave it down and then they're little booties. But nothing else needs to be cut or trimmed or shaved. And then another big part of grooming a corgi or any dog for that matter is being able to trim their nails. Their nails should be trimmed once a week if you can keep up with it, but you know, at least once a month, a really great way because if their nails start getting too long, it starts putting pressure on their like metacarpals and carpals and stuff and it starts making their paws hurt and can lead to arthritis and joint issues. So whether you are able to like Dremel or trim your dog's nails on your own or take them to a vet or a groomer to get them trimmed, nail trimming is super important. Okay, we're on to the last thing that you need to know when you're taking care of a corgi. I mentioned this early on, but corgis obviously have really long backs and really short legs. And this can typically lead to back issues. A lot of corgis develop back and hip issues as they get older. So you kind of want to restrict them from certain activities like jumping off the bed, jumping off the couch as much as you can, running up and down stairs. I actually have stairs for Willow, which she looks like she wants to get off the bed. So let me show you. <laughs> okay. Are you going to go down? Are you going to go down the stairs? Willow has stairs because jumping off the bed is going to put a lot of pressure in her <laughs> in her shoulders and in her elbows and stuff and we just want to keep our dogs from putting any unnecessary pressure on those joints and on their back. So having stairs for your couch and bed is a really great thing, like 100% think that corgis need. So yeah, I would also, if you have a corgi, get pet insurance because as I said, they are kind of prone to injuries. Willow just recently, a couple months ago, was limping on her shoulder. I think she like tore a ligament or something or something minor, but she was limping and I was really worried that I was gonna be stuck with a huge vet bill. Things to be aware of, I know a lot of corgis that have had arthritis at a young age or torn their, um, I think it's a CCL, the dog burst of an ACL, hip dysplasia. So pet insurance is really, is a really smart thing to have when you have any dog, but especially a corgi. 
So yeah, I think that's everything that you need to know when taking care of a corgi. Literally everything. We covered it all. No, but seriously, if you have any other questions, please let me know. I Seriously, if you have any other questions, please let me know. I will respond to them in the comments, and I hope this was helpful. Tell me about your corgis, tell me about your experiences. I love it, I'm obsessed with corgis, and Willow knows it. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. If you have not yet, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any video idea requests, please let me know. I would love to cover them for you if I can. And um, yeah, make sure you like this video if it was helpful. Comment if you have any questions and turn on your notifications so that you know the next time we post a video. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.